Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to an all new Trenny and C. Uh, we have a fantastic, uh, or at least we think we have a fantastic show planned. Uh, we certainly have a fantastic lineup of, of scotch and a fantastic guest. So, um, Trenny, why don't you introduce our guest for the night? Okay, we have Mike Breezois. What Well, why doesn't he introduce himself? That's a good idea. It's <laughs> probably better. Perfect. Well, yeah, of course. Well, everyone, uh, Mike Breezois, I'm the brand ambassador for Deanston here in Canada. And Trenny and C have welcomed me back. So I guess the last live went pretty well. So they said, oh, we can get them back on the show again. So why not taste and Deanston together? Oh, yeah. Well, it's really, you can carry the show for us, which is great. <laughs> well, I, I think this is a, a kind of a, a cool one, though, because we're specifically focusing on Deanston this time. Like, you know, last time we went over a couple of different things and you might as well, you know, remind people of how you got involved in all that stuff. But tonight it's all about Deanston, which is exciting for us because like Deanston has been one of our top contenders of Scotch whiskeys, mm -hmm. you know, over the last couple of years. So it's exciting. Yeah, of course. Well, I've, I've seen a few of your reviews. The Deanston 12 review of you guys sitting in the chair out back was uh, mm. pretty, uh, pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> was that the one where we were outside and there's like a weed eaters and birds and all sorts of things? Yeah. Going on? Yeah. And we were still physical distancing at that time. Yes. Yes, you were. We're <laughs> really physical distancing right now, though. <laughs> yeah. We're all split up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Split screen. Um. So yeah, like Trini was saying there, Mike, why don't you uh, tell the people a little bit about um, what you do and how you got into what you do? Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, so as a brand ambassador, I, I get to usually travel across the country. And over the last five years, I've been very lucky to represent three distilleries, one being Deanston, which we're tasting tonight, the other being Bunnahaven and Tobamori Distillery. And I started my journey just like everybody else, you know, trying whiskey for the first time and wanted to explore and taste and uh, attending whiskey shows. And then I tasted Bunna 12 for the first time and blew me away. And oh, I was, yeah. Yeah. I, I needed to learn more about this distillery. And then, you know, the website didn't have much information. Uh, there wasn't a brand ambassador in Canada. There was one brand ambassador that was a global brand ambassador. And I was like, you know, we got to get this brand out there. You know, people in Canada, I need them to know about this because I love it. And I think everyone who tries it will love it too. So I told them to hire me and they said, okay. So, uh, probably that, and I wish it was always yeah. that easy. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty cool that you took the bull by the horns and you just said, Hey, I'm your guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they took a risk and I think it was a good risk because I'm having a blast because, you know, Bunna is kind of like my go-to whiskey, but you know, Deanston is, is getting up there because some of the releases we've had over the last couple of years and um, have really kind of tested my palate. Like I love whiskeys that give me something different every time I go back to it. And I think Winston is kind of like that expression that does that. It's kind of opens up a little differently every time you go to the Virgin Oak again or the 12 year. I know C loves the 12 year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then the 18. So it's, it all gives you something different. And then some of the limited editions that were thrown in in the giveaway uh, at the end of the show it will excite some people too so well yeah actually, so speaking of that why don't we uh introduce that thought right now to the people that are watching and once we kind of announce this giveaway um see uh let us know who we're we're speaking to here tonight mm -hmm. who we're speaking like to? Who, who's watching us right now oh okay <laughs> <laughs> um okay yeah so some of the uh, uh, great components of the show tonight are, of course, we are going to taste some uh, some excellent scotch from Deanston. We've got uh, the Virgin Oak. We've got the 12 and the 18 here. And then, Mike, you may choose to uh, walk the people through some of the uh, the limited or, um, or other uh, releases that you have available on hand. Beyond that, um, I do have a bit of a surprise... Uh, game for uh mike and trenny to uh and actually for the people i mean i think everybody can everybody can participate but we're we're definitely going to get uh your feedback specifically from the two of you on on this game so okay. we'll break up. and this we'll, is a surprise for me i must mention yeah you, <laughs> i don't know what's happening so. no you're not ready for this either no. um and then uh and then of course we we have the giveaway so um 
Mike has been so generous as to offer up a Deanston uh, sample pack that he will be giving out to. And here I'm going to make a bit of a plug because that's what we do here at Trini and C. Um, our patrons are going to be eligible to win this sample pack. So um, I think if you're a person that's interested in free whiskey from time to time, uh, giveaways and just cool whiskey stuff, then you should take the look at our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash mm -hmm. That is um, the, the people you can, you can basically sign up to support our channel. And uh, for those who support us, those are the people that are eligible for our, uh, our giveaway. So, and I just got to say, like uh, adding on to that, that your chances of winning <laughs> greatly outweigh any other contest you've been involved in so <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, tonight like... tonight those odds are i believe they're one in 51 everybody has a single number because it's the holiday season you know we're yeah. just making it easy for everyone plus i didn't have my normal computer available to like do all the metrics and stuff either so i just gave everybody a number it's been emailed to you if you haven't looked at your your patreon emails um, then look at it now your name is there with a number beside it we'll do our randomizer uh, a little bit later uh, in the show and somebody will will win the sample pack so mike why don't you can, or can you tell us what's going to be in the sample pack? Because I think you have some cool stuff lined up for this week. Yeah, absolutely. So for sure, we'll I'll throw in the three that we're tasting together, like the Virgin Oak, the 12-year, 18-year. And then I'll throw in the 13-year Cream Sherry finish, was okay. our limited edition last year. Then I'll throw in the 16-year Organic Oloroso, which is my whiskey of the year last year. Oh. Um, and I'll throw in the 21-year Palo Cortado. And then lastly, the Decent 40. Oh, whoa. <laughs> so that's that's a pretty good prize pack for you know the people that are paying a dollar a month yeah yeah right? for for one dollar that sample pack is worth it um uh so check out our patreon page get signed up and you'll be eligible for whatever we give away next normally it's full bottles of things and uh and samples and artwork mm -hmm. and all kinds of cool shit. we've got artwork coming up soon but anyway um so thank you for that mike you you uh you were a previous um, Dram Club. Uh, you sponsored us on the Dram Club uh, mm -hmm. a few months back, and we did a, a. I think we did a bottle giveaway at that time as well. So um, it's been great. We appreciate all of your support as well. So you know what? I'm gonna just interrupt. A lot of our fans, I bet right now, their skin is crawling because they just want to get into a whiskey. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just suggest that we pour something at least. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll start with the Deanston Virgin Oak. Okay, let's get into it. Yeah. And hey, should I keep plugging stuff or do it throughout the whole show? <laughs> so I've got more plugs to do. Oh, yeah. No, we, we'll keep doing that. But you got to give the people what they truly want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're starting on the Virgin Oak. Mm. And I got to say, I, I poured all three drams. I probably uh, did that too. And did a pre kind of nosing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I haven't actually had a whiskey tonight. Yeah, good, good showing there. Um, the first thing that came to me when I first put my nose to it was this peachy flavor. Mm. Yeah, what I like about the Virgin Oak, it's it, yeah, it's our introductory whiskey. It's been around for ten years now. We released it in two thousand ten, so wow. it's uh, you know consistent core range of Deanston and. It's kind of like for bourbon lovers. I know we talked about this before. Um, yeah. Virgin Oak, every time I'm at a whiskey show, there, someone comes up to the table, it's like, I love bourbon. I'm like, great. I got the whiskey. I got the scotch for you. Oh, I don't like scotch. I'm like, no, no. You got to try the Virgin Oak because it has a lot of vanilla, has a lot of those oak influences, and then has kind of a little sweetness of fruit. So you met. So for me, I always get green apple. But uh, it's, yeah. you know, and you're drinking natural color, unchill filtered, ball at 46.3%. Uh, I think it's a great introductory to the line of Deanston, and you get everything on the nose. Like, if you're new yeah. to Scotch whiskey, you're not not nosing something of a flavor in this one. But the cool thing is that um, Trenny and I were talking about the fact that Deanston has its own house style that you can kind of smell on each one of them, and it's it's a very nice house style. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing house style. Um, 
and like the, basically the overall characteristic of of the three in front of us tonight is something that you kind of like you can't really find in other places is the thing that's different about it to me you know like it is i i find that it as it opens up a lot more flavors and like as you were saying mike earlier that you can kind of revisit it and get new things like mm -hmm. tonight i did a little pre-nosing also and this may sound it, it's this kind of a floral cinnamon toast crunch kind of thing is what i get <laughs> you're not wrong though you're not but wrong like no because it's got that graininess too yeah and it's almost has like a a sea salt honey characteristic but that's that that bourbon style i mm -hmm. I, I hate to say bourbon style because it's not that's what it is but mm -hmm. I find it in the 12 as well. It's yeah. that the the bourbon barrel shines really well with the just the new make spirit, I think. Yeah, well, Stephen Woodcock, who's our master distiller, says bourbon, ex-bourbon, and Deanston just marry so well together. Uh, That's yeah. why the majority of our cast that are maturing in the warehouse is ex-bourbon for Deanston. Yeah, we experiment with a few others, but he says that bourbon and Deanston just the perfect pair. It seems like, to, like the actual spirit is it seems to be very much made for that barrel and that's just it when you when you found something that works that well you know like go run with it right yeah. Like, all day yeah exactly exactly it's like our fermentation period is quite long at deanston as well so we're looking at about 100 hours of fermentation and that's unusually long compared to other distilleries like other distilleries around 60 80 hours but we do that 100 hours because we get that waxy honey note and mm -hmm. Deanston's really, really in high demand for blenders. And uh, so they want that waxy honey note. Like we only keep 20% of our whiskey for single malts. The rest go to blends. Really? Yeah. Can you tell us the blends that you guys go to? I only know the ones we have. So Scottish Leader is oh, one okay. of the more prominent ones. That's one of our heavily, heavily in the Asian market. And uh, it's more like sweet, easy to drink. It was created for them, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy how many uh, blends there are in the world. Because I keep stumbling upon ones that you never, well, I've never seen around here, but like you would never have heard of. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting, and yeah. and the fact is the that like the the blend market is still so much bigger than the single malt market yeah. is crazy too. Because this is like you know this is the gold, this is the juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so this okay. here for maturation it's matured in ex bourbon yeah. and then finished in virginal cast for about six to nine months and it's a number four char on the virginal cast so you get into heavy char mm -hmm. uh so you may get a little bit of that natural sugars that would come out of the cast similar to yeah the mm. should we taste it let's yeah. actually taste the stuff sure <laughs> okay, here we go mm. see for me, this is the flavor profile that keeps coming back, but mm -hmm. the, the specific difference in the virgin oak is that finishing style you're talking about. Like, it is mm -hmm. like a wet wood kind of a thing. I don't know yeah. how to describe mm -hmm. it, but that's what I, I've come back to this Deanston uh, virgin oak numerous times over the last year or so. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's one of those cons consistent like staples in my in my whiskey cabinet nowadays yeah. like honestly for people that are starting well not even like people that are into the whiskey world it's a really good option because the price is right and it behaves exactly how how you would hope yeah um we do have to give a shout out to Paul Bovis here, who gave us a very Merry Christmas present here. Uh, much, much appreciated, Paul. Uh, uh, I think Trenny should do a shot Whoa, for Paul. that. I didn't even see that. Wow. Thank you, man. That's awesome. That's very awesome. Do you think I should pull out a, uh, the Trenny and C song? Well, you know what? I'll, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, you, you do owe a song for that.
subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> there we go. That there it is. And to um to support your brand there, Mike, I'll I'll do a, a shot of black bottle to uh to cheers Paul. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The bottle, love it. <laughs> oh, that'll that'll change the palette a little. Oh, just yeah. a touch, yeah. A little light smoke there. <laughs> mm, I'll probably, it'll probably bring out the the virgin oak. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, I have a question on your personal tastes and palate. Um, do you are you a water adder? I am. I am. Yeah. I do have usually a couple drops of water. Is uh, that the derogatory term? <laughs> <laughs> but like for me, I'll drink it on its own first. Yeah. See how it is, and then I'll drop a a couple drops of water but honestly when i usually know a whiskey and i know what to expect i usually don't drink it out of a glencairn i'll drink drink it out of a tumbler because i know what i'm expecting i just want to sit yeah. back relax yeah. have a tumbler pour two ounce pour and then just that, that's just it i think you you hit the nail on the head because like it's not always about analyzing every last second of your whiskey mm -hmm. you got to also just sit back with it and relax and not think about what you're drinking too much and just enjoy it because it's it, you know like i i'm the same with a lot actually the deanston virgin oak same thing i have a tumbler sometimes I even add an ice cube and mm -hmm. yeah sit back and watch some simpsons or whatever yeah exactly like by all means like when you're first tasting a whiskey drink it out of a glen cairn experience it try to get everything as it is but when you know it drink it out of any glass you want drink it with yeah. an ice cube add a, a splash of water if you want put it in a cocktail if you want like have fun with it <laughs> um just so that anybody knows that um <laughs> if you happen to hear music in the trend in any trending and video whether it's at the beginning the end or in the middle it's always us doing the music so if, <laughs> yeah. if, if you hear a really shitty song at the end about scotch time scotch time or something like that that that's us <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, we do I all mean, of our own music. Pretty good covers too, like oh, <laughs> for the largest dram, <laughs> stupid stuff. Pretty good. Uh, um, uh, this is really just like a way to launch our music career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that his actual name, Clementine? Man, who knows? Who really knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, so um. We've got some other things for tonight. I think we should um, restate that there is a giveaway tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike has provided us with uh, an amazing sample pack that includes what, Mike? Uh, so you got the virgin oak, the 12, the 18 year, the 13 year cream sherry, the 16 year organic oloroso, uh, the 21 year palo cortado, and the Deanston 40 year, which you oh. gentlemen tried last January. Yes. <laughs> yes, we Mike. Mike was an amazing uh host for us at the previous whiskey fest and uh and uh treated us very well and it's a shame i gotta say it's a real shame that it's not happening this year we were really looking forward to this one but um you know soon enough we'll all be able to get together and do that sort of thing again yeah we had uh, big plans this year i was gonna rent a sailboat and go out in the water and have some drams oh <laughs> man <laughs> That's um, actually like probably one of the things we can do still. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're you're heading into like full blown lockdown in a couple of days, aren't you, Mike? Yeah, I'm terrible. Well, I've been treating it as a lockdown anyways. Like I haven't really done much since March. Uh, yeah. Luckily enough, I can do everything virtual. Um, but I haven't been out doing anything in live in person since yeah. March. And even with family, we stay close to home. It's there's. You know, just taking it easy, and you know, we have enough things to entertain the three kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and, totally. and when you've got a cabinet like that behind you, I mean, you, you don't really <laughs> your entertainment is built right into your shelf. Yeah, yeah I just got another box today full of stuff. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go to the office. The office comes to me now. That's yeah, great. that's awesome. That's perfect. Good. Um, okay, so just before we move on to our next one, I see it, uh, Clementine. Uh, yeah. If you could just uh, give a shout out to some of the people watching tonight. Holy shnikes. We got uh, we got a bunch of people watching. And as always, um, we cannot say hello to you until you say hello to us. Because we see the number of people watching, but we only see the names of the people who comment. So you must comment and say hello, please. Uh, 
And Let Mike, us. by the way, can you see the comments as they pop up? Uh, I do see the comments, yeah. Yeah, when they pop up. Okay, so we've got Indy Ingot. We've got uh, Paul Bovis, who's a uh, Dram Club member. We've got uh, Jason Fisk, Donner Pass Whiskey. We've got uh, DMC KY, which I'm going to guess is Kentucky, which is a new uh, patron, so welcome. Oh, awesome. uh, we got uh, Joshua Asplin. Uh, Christine Daisy's here. Graham Young, uh, Nurse Dave's Shaving World. Uh, that's, that's that's a new a one. New one. Long time viewer, first time commenter. Welcome. Um, Moose seventy six. We've got we've got a frozen mouse. No, the com <laughs> comments are frozen. <laughs> it's because we're just getting so many. Oh man, Vaz Vegas. Now I'm going from the bottom up. Michael McAllister. Whenever I hear McAllister, I think of Kevin McAllister at this oh, time yeah, of year. It's, it's the time of year, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, our boy Ryland Maschak. Ryland Maschak's one of the few people um, that I've met in person. Rylan uh, moved to the island and uh, uh, met him in person. So uh, an amazing connection there. Um, oh, my shit's frozen. Okay, the comments are frozen, so never mind. Anyway, every, everyone else, welcome. Um, Trevor Wright. The Red Dragon. And when I hear the Red Dragon, I always think of um, Frank the Tank's car in uh, Old School. He's oh, working on the old Red Dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Joel Gossman. Um, so anyway, I can't go back in time in the comments because they're freezing up, maybe because there's too many or something like that. But anyway, we got a great show for you tonight. We've gone through the Virgin Oak, which one thing that hasn't been said, it has been said in the comments, but we haven't mentioned it, is that I think... Um, the Virgin Oak is almost unanimously considered the best bang for your buck single malt scotch uh, in the industry right now. Um, you know what's that? What's that meme where the guys like you know um, Deans and Virgin Oak is the you know best bang for your buck? You know, prove me wrong or whatever the oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. good good luck arguing against that, right? Yeah, yeah she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Good dessert. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we've got uh, we've got some more to taste. We've yep. got um, some fun and games yet to come here. Uh, I do have a, a little trivia segment for the YouTube gentlemen, uh, but maybe we should get into the twelve before. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Before we do that, absolutely. Okay, so Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, so here's our Deanston twelve year, and. You probably notice on the bottle, there's signatures on it. So anybody at the distillery that actually has a hand in making the whiskey signs the bottle. And I think it's the only distillery that does this on every single bottle. So if the stillman was different that day, they signed the bottle for that day. Um, so it's really, uh, you know, giving back to the community as well. So um, our 12 year was launched in 2008 and it was one of our first whiskeys that was unchill filtered natural color and bottled at 46.3%. So this whiskey here is matured in 100% ex bourbon barrels, and I call this the perfect sharing whiskey. It's a whiskey that you know when you drink it with somebody. Eventually, when we can get back together, you almost—it's like a creaminess that overtakes your tongue. It's—I've uh, never seen such a creamy whiskey. Uh, so this one, lots of honey. You get lots of those bourbon influences as well, and uh, yeah, like nutmeg, honey. Uh, I. I I get like a nougat and like a, a fig Newton <laughs> banana bread kind of thing to yeah. it as well. Um, one thing that I think is really great about the Deanston lineup is the mouthfeel. Like you said there, Mike, mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's um, not only the creaminess, creaminess, but it's the mouth presence that it has. Like it, it's lively in your mouth. Like there are some scotches that are like really great tasting, but they're almost they're flat. Yeah, they're flat that, you know, but this, this has the, as we've kind of like coined the term, like the, the effervescent tingle that, mm -hmm. you know, runs across your palate, like through the tasting experience and, and finishes, like, it's just the mouthfeel. I, I, I love the mouth presence. Like it, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's where you taste your whiskey, but you feel it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and also not to mention like the, um, 46.3 percent right yeah so and that's something you can find with every single thing that you promote like the uh the tobermory mm -hmm. or, is that what it was yeah, yeah. well tobermory lechick 
Fana and Deanston, all of our whiskeys are 46.3%, unless they're cash rank. Sometimes they're below 46.3 because of cash rank, but we still unchill filter and still natural color uh, yeah. at all times. Uh, it's, yeah, ex excellent stuff. Like that's, <laughs> that's what people, the thing that I really um, appreciate is the fact that this these styles of whiskey can be for anyone beginners to trying it for the first time and they'll fall mm -hmm. in love with it but it's kind of designed for the people that know what they're looking for in a whiskey it's not really? it's not a insulting anyone's intelligence kind of thing you know like it's mm -hmm. got the non-chill filter it's natural color 46.3 percent. it's got an age statement it's really reasonably priced like it checks every single box as mm -hmm. well yeah, this one is a, a gem. I wish I had more of it in Canada. I know we have it in BC. We have some in Alberta, but um, it's been getting tougher and tougher. I think New Brunswick, we have some now. We brought some in for the show, but the show was canceled, but have some available. <laughs> but yeah, so going back to the, I'm just tasting it now. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if we're still on the nose or not, but no, we'll uh, drink up. Uh, with, the, with the flavor, though, like that creaminess is where it, it arrives, mm -hmm. which is kind of funny for something that's so just natural from the barrel you know yeah absolutely and this so this was my uh personal whiskey of the of the year mm -hmm. this year and that was because like trenny and i always talk about like having a moment with a with a whiskey and like for me this was this like i haven't had a it wasn't even a moment it was like, uh, it was like a month it, it was like a quarter it was, it was i had like a quarter with it yeah <laughs> it was like i must have you know, like I've, I've rarely in my scotch drinking experience repurchased a bottle because there's so much out there, right? It's like, you know, go, go and try something else. But, um, a couple of the only bottles that I've repurchased multiple, multiple times are Buna 12 and now Deanston 12. So, um, and those are both, I, I'm not sure if Buna 12 was a, my whiskey of the year, but it may have been, it was probably my scotch of the year, like three years yeah, ago. It was, it was an honorable mention every, every yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every year. So, um, you know, obviously both of them have some of those, those amazing characteristics, the, the 46.3, as you said, Mike, uh, you know, I think Boone is your go-to, right? Like mm -hmm. as a brand. Yes. It, it's, you know, like, even like I have three kids and my wife says, well, what, who's your favorite? And I can't say that, but I represent three brands. I can easily say that Bunna is my favorite, but I, I'm yeah. serious though. Deanston, I have more Deanston behind me than I do Bunna right now because yeah. Deanston is really um, showcasing some pretty amazing experiments with some of the limited editions they uh, recently released, some new ones that are coming as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Some pretty cool stuff coming. Yeah. And you, you gave us, you gave us samples of the 40 and the Nelly Furtado last time. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> the Palo Furtado. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. That's the first time we had ever heard that word before, I think. So we're like, ah, oh, Nelly, Nelly Furtado. She's yeah, good. yeah. No, it, it, that one was a gem. We had that one in BC last year for the Spirits release. Uh, no Dean Sim with the Spirit release this year, just the Manzanilla from Bunna. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so they had the Dean Sim 40 as well. Will Deanston be putting out a Nelly Furtado Timberland mix or what? Oh, we can find out. We never know. <laughs> <laughs> that actually works. That yeah. actually, it does work. Yeah. We'll get the soundtrack going too. No. You'll play it, right? There we go. Part there of the we Yeah, we can write the music for it. Yeah. Um, so, okay, uh, Clementine. Steve, yes. Yes. Why don't you uh, pull your game you're going to do on us? <laughs> <laughs> Well, before I do that, in the spirit of the holiday season, people should know that the Trenny and C uh, Christmas tree ornament is currently available on the market. You just need to go to PayPal, send fifteen dollars to Trenny and C at gmail.com and we will mail you your fifteen. That's all. <laughs> Try and find a better Christmas ornament for fifteen dollars online. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look what I can do. I mean, it can do almost anything. <laughs> I mean, any yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, that's serious, by the way. You can buy that shit. Yeah. I'll tell you that. I mean, I don't go to the dollar store for dollar ornaments. <laughs> it's going to have a training C logo on it. Yeah. Okay. So the game that we're playing that everyone can play 
but I'm going to specifically check your stats, the two of you, when we're done here. Okay. <clears throat> You've heard of like two truths and a lie? Yes. Well, this is three truths and a lie. Mm. So what this is, is that these are holiday traditions from around the world. Okay, so three three of them are true. One of them is a lie. Oh, so okay. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell everyone the 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 four traditions, and you have to tell me which one is the lie. Okay, so it's four truths. No, there's, <laughs> there's, like there's four, four traditions. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Three yeah. are true, one's a lie. So everybody that's watching at home, um, don't Google it, okay? Because then you'll, like, we want, you got to guess. Okay, so guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you, what, is, you have to, is it, is, how many questions are there? Because is it, should it be me first and then no, like back and no, forth I just, just everyone? I'm going to read all four of them to you. Okay. And then at the end, I want you, Trenny, and then you, Mike, and then everyone at home to tell me which one they think is the lie. Okay. Okay. And so what you got to remember here is that I made one of these up. Yes. 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 Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of fucked up. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's go with the first one. So these are holiday traditions around the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I got to try not to tip my hat, my hand here. In Austria, St. Nicholas has an evil counterpart called Krampus. He is the bad cop to St. Nicholas's good cop, a demon-like creature with one task, to punish bad children before Christmas. Men dress in devil costumes, roaming the streets, carrying chains and a basket for abducting especially bad children and hauling them to hell. Can I go first? No, no, no. We're not. You got to hear them all. Okay. Well, that's okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. That would have been a lot of thought for you to put into. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our next tradition comes from rural Saskatchewan, Canada. Homegrown tradition. Whoa. Um, uh, from rural <laughs> comes a not so healthy tradition. Each year, every child that be <laughs> I like that term. Every child that becomes legal drinking age is gifted a pack of cigarettes and a case of beer. When the delighted family hands over the gifts, they sing a traditional song. Smokes and beer, smokes and smokes and beer. Let's ring in another year. Smokes and beer, smokes and beer. If you're drunk, you'll never fear. Wow. Wow. That's 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 a good one. Okay, so that okay, we're on to the next one. It sounds very Saskatchewan-ish, though. Okay. <laughs> uh, next time you find yourself complaining about Granny's festive Brussels sprouts. Spare your thoughts for the children in Greenland. Each Christmas, they have to bite into Matic, raw whale skin with a little blubber and kiviak, which is made by wrapping a small Arctic bird in seal skin, burying it for several months and eating its decomposing flesh. Wow. That sounds... It's not a tradition. I, uh, I thought this was going to be like turkey dinner and like uh, <laughs> we have <lots> <laughs> traditions from around the world. <laughs> All right. Uh, final one. Locals in Catalina created a character out of a log, drawing a face on it and giving it a hat. Then they spent two weeks feeding it fruit, nuts, and sweets. On Christmas Eve, the entire family beats the log with a stick singing a, tra a traditional song and the song is shit log shit nuggets hazelnuts and cheese if you don't shit well i'll hit you with a stick shit log <laughs> they sing the song until the log excretes out all its treats <laughs> I, you know what, you're, you were very good at pretending you were reading all these for the first time. Okay. <laughs> so there's your four traditions. You have the people of Catalina with the shit log. Uh, you have 
Um, you have the, the kids in Greenland that have to eat the whale blubber and the dead fish. Yeah. You have the, kid, or the kids in Saskatchewan that get smokes and beer. And then you have the Norway devil, <laughs> devil take you to hell fucking St. Nick. Hey, Mike, you want to go first on this one? Hey, which I'm, one's bullshit, Mike? I think it's Norway. <laughs> which was which one was the Norway? One? The blubber eating? No, it's already Austria. The first one. The which is the the devil the devil yeah. Saint Nick. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna say the opposite because there was a movie that came out called Krampus or whatever recently. What, like a and horror movie or something? Yeah, like about that character. Okay. So I feel like that's the a true one. Ooh. I'm going to say the smokes and beer one might be the fake one. And hey, what, if you're... not, yeah. that is like another like heritage moment for Canada. Okay, <laughs> you got to keep in mind, three of these are real. Yeah, I know. And and there's only one. The fake one is the smokes so, and beer. So none of you guys think that the shit log is, you think that's real? <laughs> well, I mean. With the shitting song, the song about a log shitting. <laughs> you both think that's real. So you're saying that's the one you made up? No, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So shit log is real. Yeah. Whale Wait, blubber. What, what do the people say? Oh, yeah. Let's, okay. Smokes the beer. Uh, shit. <laughs> Saskatchewan. <laughs> I don't know. They, they're all over this thing. People, I think everyone's all over the map on this one. Yeah. Because, like, whatever one you made up, you put, like, a lot of effort into, actually. <laughs> I took a minute to write it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the... <laughs> anyway, Especially whatever. Especially one of the ones that has a song. Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good... That's me. See, I had to... Okay, so the smokes and beer one is the fake one. <laughs> yes! Okay, I got it right. <laughs> and but... I had to write one with a song to make the other one with a song seem normal, like, to make it seem <laughs> believable. That's so good. I'm glad. Like, I'm, I'm kind of actually disappointed that that isn't the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank thank you all. Thank thank you, gentlemen, for playing. Uh, that was that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully, can I just say like, can we write that song now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Smokes and beer, smokes and beer. Let's bring it another year. Yeah. <laughs> smokes and beer. If you're drunk, you'll never fear. Of course, I wrote that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's got you written all over it. You, yeah, you know my writing style. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had an un- yeah, yeah. Trini had an unfair advantage there, Mike. He knows he knows my songwriting style. <laughs> oh, that's okay, that's okay. It's fun. I I was blown away by all of them. I was like, really? yeah, yeah. But uh, well, I yeah. gotta say now though, the fact that there is a song about a shitting log is pretty <laughs> amazing. Well, that's Graham Young. The shit log is real. Fantastic. <laughs> 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 oh god. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, good times. Uh, I guess we're on to the 18. Yeah. <laughs> Back to business. Great segue. <laughs> now we're on to the 18 year old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, which is not shitty at all. No. I don't know. Do you want, do you, do you think anyone would be interested in knowing a little bit of the history of Deanston? Absolutely. If it's anything like the history of the shitting log. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're going to have to follow that up, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't you know. know. Maybe we'll get next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So, Trent, Trenny and I aren't great at doing research, so we're very interested in the history of Deanston. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, Deanston was actually originally a cotton mill that was established in the 1800s. And from leading up to 1965, was. Ex- exclusively a cotton mill, but the demand really started to diminish and it closed its shop in 65, but reopened as a whiskey distillery in 1966. It's the only distillery in Scotland that has multi-level floors for now. Uh, Two of the floors are taken out so the stills can fit in and the top two floors are vacant. And you can actually, when you visit the distillery, if you get lucky, you can go up and see, you see where some of the original machinery was actually in place during those times. Uh, Deanston is probably one of the most beautiful distilleries I've ever visited. Everything is super shiny. Anything copper, it's super shiny. You go to Bunner, it's not shiny. It's mm. it's a it's a working distillery. You can actually feel it when you're there. But Deanston, it's really about showcasing its beauty. Um, our warehouse is actually the old weaving shed 
where they stored cotton that was built in 1831. So it's, we feel is the best place to mature our whiskey because the temperature fluctuations and humidity fluctuations are nil. So it stays consistently the same temperature. So that's where we feel it's, yeah, the best place to mature our whiskey. Hmm. We still about three and a half million liters a year. And like I said before, we only keep about 20% for single malts. The rest go to blends. So it's still a small distillation when you look at some of the big boys in the industry. Um, but we're looking at hopefully increasing our percentage to single malts. But again, it all comes to warehouse space. And we like the idea of the weaving shed. Uh, so if we need more warehouse space, it means we have to build more warehouses behind the distillery. And in, we don't want to lose kind of like the distinctive flavor that Deanston has. Yeah. So tonight we've tasted three of the core range, which is the Virgin Oak, the 12 and the 18. The only other core range we have is the 15 year organic, uh, which hopefully I can get into Canada soon enough, but that's the uh, the fourth one in our core range. But yeah, Deanston, we're innovators. We like to have fun, we're risk takers. We like to do things differently and we're not afraid to do that either. Um, but we really believe in that industrious spirit. And the other cool thing about Deanston is we're the only distillery that is 100% self-sufficient. So we actually have a hydroelectricity plant at the distillery that was built during the times of the cotton mill when they built the village. So we uh, we only use about 20 to 25 percent electricity, and we give back the rest of the community uh, to uh, you know. Deanston's all about spirit community, so giving back to the community as much as possible, and the community embraces that as well. Um, and all of our barley is sourced by local farmers, so we don't go anywhere else but our local farmers to give back to the community as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. Well, let's talk a little bit about this 18 year old now, because this one, I'm just starting to get my nose dug into it. Uh -huh. And uh, it kind of has, again, that house style that is yeah. recognizably specific to Deanston. <laughs> but I don't know. OK, this might just be because it's a very specifically personal experience. But there was I used to work at a, uh, a brewery that every Christmas would come out with a chocolate cherry porter. Mm -hmm. And something about this nose reminds me of that. And I, yeah. there's this chocolatey cherry kind of thing going on, which is quite a bit different than the other ones for me. Yeah. Like it's, it's not necessarily, you know, we always talk about better and best and good or whatever, but like <laughs> all this, of these mm -hmm. are, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> this show is literally called, what's the best dean's <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but, but i mean like there's it's it has that house style but it just specifically has notes in it that the others don't and that's right i don't know if it's specific to the age or what or the barrels but yeah um, it's um, the one thing that's different about this deanston compared to the other two is uh, i'll show the bottle for everybody to see if they haven't seen it before mm -hmm. Beauty. So the Dean said it's 17 years in ex hoghead and yeah. then the final year in first fill ex bourbon. Um, yeah. oh, so okay. that's something different. You don't see a lot of finishing in first fill bourbon. Usually it's you know, the maturation and then the finishing is usually in a sherry or a wine cask. Yeah. Uh, where at Deanston, you know, it goes back to two master distiller and master blenders, Ian McMillan. He didn't like the traditional 18 in ex bourbon or in ex hoghead after they were just playing around with it. So he decided to finish it in first fill bourbon and he thought that was the perfect way. Because well, it kind of brings out those vanillas and like the actual, like I like the virgin oak for that re reason, yeah. you know, and maybe that's. Yeah. So that's I got a question for you, Mike, and I don't know if you, you um, <clears throat> know this information or can give it away or not, but like there's obviously a lot of ex bourbon barrel going on at Deanston. Mm -hmm. Do you have a distillery that you're linked to for those barrels or is that uh, a trade secret or? So you, you can see them all when you visit Deanston, but, uh, oh, I asked that question too. I'm like Kirsty when she was our master blender, I'm like, do we kind of select certain distilleries that we want to focus on for our ex bourbon maturation? She goes, I wish we could, because, uh, there's so much demand for ex bourbon barrels. It was almost like, we'll get what we can. Uh, but when I was there last, there was Four Roses, there was a lot of Jim Beam, there was uh, Wild Turkey that were uh, cast that were maturing our, our beans. <laughs> Sorry. <Love>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's the, the Yule log. Yeah. 
Sorry yeah, to interrupt your thought there, it, Mike. No worries. It's not a secret. It's just, yeah, it's whatever we can get. Like we work with a cooperage in Kentucky uh, to try to source some of the, the cast that we're looking for. And our master uh, blender would usually travel to Kentucky once a year to tell them what type of cast they're looking for, for our, uh, our Deanston and, and the other two distillers you represent. But the one thing we've been really focusing on is better cast quality when it comes to our maturations. You know, go going back five, six years, some of our casts weren't the best. And I, Distel has really put a big investment in ensuring that we get good quality casts for our maturation for our whiskeys. Yeah, and I guess kind of that like means- if, if you already have a good new make spirit, like mm-hmm. you don't want to ruin anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the time to shine is picking the barrels. And like, yeah. I know a number of years ago, like eight or nine years ago in the, a lot of the, some of the Scotch world, some of the sherry barrels were very kind of skunky and mm-hmm. like, like, yeah, sulfury or whatever. But yeah. it's everything's, you know, in my mind is a lot of things have gotten better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think many distilleries have started focusing more on better cast management. And like the 18 for Deanston, like Stephen Woodcock, our master distiller, says this, this is the, the most balanced 18 year he's ever tasted. And he's worked in other distilleries before. It's the balance from start to finish on this one. It's one of its own, which makes it that much from the 12. Well, over well let's, let's taste it then. Let's get into mm-hmm. this one. I got to say that just from a nosing perspective, the very ter- first time that I nosed it, I got this mm-hmm. tiny little bit of a black licorice nose, which I'm not pulling off of it right now, but I, I did the first time I put my nose into it, but now I'm getting like this cotton candy kind of thing mm-hmm. happening. I can see that cotton candy actually. Hmm. Mm. It may have it's, been my wife's um, cotton black candy licorice hand soap, or, 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 <laughs> or her uh, or her candle, but I mean, could have been anything. You know? yeah. yeah, that's a Dean's and eighteen. I I I don't drink the eighteen often, uh, but when I do, yeah, it brings me back. It's it's nice. It's just it's not overly crisp. It's not as heavy as the 12 year the 12 years a lot more heavier in terms of that maltiness and creaminess the 18 kind of gives you kind of like that same thing throughout it's not a big hype at the beginning not a big downfall but it's kind of like consistent from start to finish it has like i'm trying to put my finger on what this note is that i'm getting on the finish here but i, mean, I honestly it's... get like a a slight and this is never meant to sound bad but a slight soapy note mm-hmm. on the finish, which I I really love. Like that's what I find in like old Pulteney too. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's got it's, that it's similar kind of a idea. A little salty, a little soapy, a little yeah. floral. Yeah, I catch that on on the finish. I think that's maybe what I was like struggling to uh, communicate to the people. But but it's consistent throughout. But the on the arrival of you know it's. We are saying uh, the twelve-year-old's like very soft and buttery. This mm-hmm. is just a little bit more. Like it might be the age; it's just like robust. And I know that's not really a very good ex- ex- explanation, mm-hmm. but there's just a, a little bit more depth to mm-hmm. the initial flavor. Yeah, yeah. And this is interesting because, like, Jason Fist says personally, I prefer twelve to eighteen, and that's the whole thing about it is that older doesn't. Like for each person, older doesn't always mean better. Like I mean, Trenny, Trenny and I blind tasted the um, the one that always comes to mind was when we blind tasted the Glenn Farkless forty year old, and then we picked the twelve year old, which is like yeah, you know, we like, had all of them, mm-hmm. I think, right? Like yeah, we had five, yeah, we had a bunch of four or five. And wow, we ended up both choosing the twelve as our favorite. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Jason Fisk as well. I miss seeing you, buddy, in Calgary during my travels. <laughs> oh yeah, Jason Fisk, great dude, good dude. Yeah, um, yeah, we've got we've got a lot more people uh, that have joined. Uh, Brago one two nine is on. Oh, okay, here's a good one. Um, Steve Sparknuts. Oh, okay. He's so actually we... responsible for us having this eighteen year old, by the way. Oh, yeah, very. Is, we're actually drinking the uh, sample right now that Steve Sparknuts sent to us of the Deanston 18. So uh, that is the reason that we're able to run through the lineup. So uh, thank you, buddy. So, we, so yeah, Steve, like if it weren't for you, we might not be having this conversation with Mike tonight. Much anyway. appreciate Yeah. 
Okay, so, okay, so um, I think maybe now's the time to for that bot the the sample pack giveaway. Let's yes. let, let's uh, pump it up just one more time before we we actually <laughs> do the giveaway. Uh, Mike, what are you what are you giving away tonight? Oh, the, the, I think the pride and joy is this bad boy here. Right, I don't know if you can see it. Hold it a little closer. We can't see the logo. It says Deanston. <laughs> Hold it really close, close to the here. camera. I'm going really close. No, you got to put your hand behind it. You got to do one of these things for focus. Oh, yeah, I know the. Oh, there, working with the pros. Is that? Oh. It says forty years old. Yeah, that's forty. And then, so the highlight the forty, but there's some amazing ones in, in the pack. So we're going to include the twenty-one year Palo Cortado, the sixteen year um, Organic Oloroso, the thirteen year Cream Sherry. We're going to go with the three that we taste tonight as well, the Virgin Oak, the 12, and the 18 years. So you're pretty much, if you're new to Deanston, you get to pretty much try everything we've done in the last couple of years in terms of experimental and our core range. And so, if you mix it all together, it becomes the Nelly, Fr Nelly Furtado Timberland mix. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly it. <laughs> yeah, you should make a swamp water with all of those. <laughs> idea. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's an amazing uh, sample pack. Yeah, so, so this is what uh, our, our Patreon members are eligible to win right now. So again, we've said it before, but we'll just say it one more time. For as little as a dollar a month, you get entered into tons of different draws. We've be, we've been giving out uh, full bottles consistently every month. Oh, um, oh, look at that. I didn't even know it came in a full bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I've always assumed it's just like little samples. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and Trenny, for as little as $15, you can get this Trenny and Z <laughs> decoration. <laughs> you can get that. You can hang that on your tree. Yeah. Look, it spins. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. And, sort of, yeah. and yeah. if you cut the string off, it becomes a perfectly reasonable thing to cover your whiskey with for nosing mm. wait a minute i can't believe you thought of that Here, let me... perfect you're right <laughs> what <laughs> that's a good way to get a five dollars off challenge coin there you go okay um uh mike could do us a favor here just because we've just built up the uh the, the whole giveaway here why don't you taste one of those uh one of those fantastic additional offerings that we don't have here on hand and, and tell us like whether it's the, the 13, 16 or 40, uh, get, get into one of those bad boys. And oh, was, was, that, was that the 40 year old Trini that you just downed? Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, uh, age in the Chardonnay barrel. Yeah. So I'm going to taste, uh, what I call my whiskey of the year for this year, uh, is the 16 year organic Oloroso. Wow. And this is the 2020 best whiskey of the year. Yeah. Wow. For me, this one blew me away. I, I had no idea what to expect, like organic Oloroso. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, we had a Bunna 14PX a few years ago, and yeah. that everyone was raving about it, went crazy for it. It was like molasses. This reminds me mm. that whiskey. Okay. It is explosion of flavors. Lots going on. Cash strength, 50.6%. No, that's like a perfect cast strength in a way. And syrupy, like it's, yeah, two years in organic Oloroso. So it's 100% organic. And it's just heaven in a glass. So that one's included in the tasting pack. Um, it's, I love the 40 year, but if I can have an unlimited supply of this one, I, I'd be okay with that. Like it's the 2002 organic okay. Oloroso gem. And so where can you get that right now? So there's only a few left in Ontario. It's uh, it's two hundred dollars a bottle for the organic Oloroso. So just a price point, like the Virgin Oak is fifty bucks. The twelve year is between seventy and ninety, depending on where you are in the country. The eighteen year is about you know one sixty to two hundred. The thirteen year cream sherry was one forty. The sixteen year organic is two hundred. The twenty one year Palo Cortado or Nelly Furtado <laughs> was three hundred, and the decent forty is two thousand. Yeah. So you're getting a good kind of range of a sample pack. Wow. To hype you it up know, more, as he says. <laughs> you, you know, no, you know what's um, interesting is that the only reason that we were able to get the uh, Glenn Farkless 40-year-old was because they they sold it in mini bottles. Yeah. <laughs> like 50 mils, and it was like, it was 50 bucks. 
um, yeah. when they had it. So um, any chance but you'll no, be releasing yeah, like a tiny mini bottle? Yeah. Right? Any chance you'll be releasing the forty-year-old in a mini bottle? <laughs> I, I think the only minis I have are these Dingston twelves in here. So. Oh, that's cool. But other than that, yeah. no, the Dingston forty was so limited. Like we only had five hundred bottles that were available worldwide. Nope. Oh wow. Yeah, and the Spirit release had, I think, four of them. They sold out. Uh, I think there were twenty, almost twenty four hundred in BC. I think there's Jeff Bezos has the rest. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's um I think there's still a bottle at least at the Fourth Street liquor store in Victoria. Oh nice. Um, okay, so what what we got to do here is we got to do this giveaway. We have sent all of our patrons um, an email with their number on it, and we have numbers from one to fifty one. And I'm gonna just plug Patreon one more time. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's what ends up happening. There's people that forget that you know they've signed up for this in a, mm -hmm. a moment of drunken stupor. <laughs> and then forget that they've signed up and you know all of a sudden they receive a package in the mail from Trenny and seeing it's like a bottle of hard bag wee beastie or something you know <laughs> so so even for the people who forget that they've signed up it's it's good for you mm -hmm. so just and, do you, it. and you know what that's the thing is that we've recently recently given away um Lot 40, 100% rye. Lot 40, dark oak. Uh, we beast the... Um, we gave away the, the Alberta Premium uh, cast, cast rate. Wow. Yeah, whiskey of the year and 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 so many more over the last little while. So um, if you want your, your name uh, added to those draws, then go to our Patreon. So <clears throat> what I have here is the app called Pretty Random. And what you do is you plug in the numbers and if you oh. see here, it says minimum one, maximum 51. And when I hit randomize, it's going to pick a number and whatever number it picks, that's associated to the email that I sent earlier this evening to one of you. One of your names is attached to that number. So I will live. And, and the number is going to show up where the zero is. So I'm okay. I'm going to hit yeah. randomize, and then we will find out who our winner is. Here we go. Let's randomize it. Whoop. 24. Okay. Oh, that's my number. No, I'm trying to get the sample pack. <laughs> 24. Ken Griffey Jr., right? Okay. <clears throat> 24. Yeah. Mike Kusarek. Mm. Kusera, sorry. Mike Kusera. Okay. 24. There he is. Mike Kusera. Congratulations, Mike. We will uh, forward your address on to Mike Brizwa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will get that sample pack out to you because that is very, very cool. Um, we appreciate your time tonight, Mike. I mean, we know it's uh, it's 1230 now. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're just getting your buzz now at 1230. Yeah, I, I'm in my pajamas already, so I'm just <laughs> going upstairs, going right to bed. Brush my teeth. Got, go to bed. <laughs> we got to get some of those Deanston pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, any any final thoughts, uh, gentlemen, that, that we want to leave the people with here tonight? Well, I'm going to start. Um, yeah. I think so far tonight, I've, I've – I had little bits left in the end of my sample bottles that I've been sampling throughout the conversation. Mm -hmm. And Dean Stim in general has just been kind of an eye opener again for us in the Scotch world because we, C and I have gotten into a lot of Canadian whiskeys and bourbons and all over the place. And then you kind of come back to the classics or what you think are the classics. But this is to me the new, I know, you know, it's been around for, a number of years yeah but i come to a deanston and it gives me the reason why i love scotch again and so that is my final note like people who don't know go actually i'm going to tell this one little antidote um the other day at the liquor store um there was a couple beside me i was you know i was standing looking at the whiskey shelves 
And there's a couple you're like, oh, I really like Tomat in 12. Oh, I don't know what to do because it wasn't there. And I, I literally said, hey, uh, I don't know much in life, but I know about whiskey. And they're like, oh, okay. I was like, if you want like a su suggestion, I said the Deanston 12 because it was $72. Mm. So pretty reasonable price. 46.3% yeah. natural color, non-chill filtered. And it's not, it's not one that somebody that knows a bit about whiskey is going to turn their nose up at because it's too complex or something, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. that is the takeaway. You can really, really get into these Dean Stins. Absolutely. You can have fun with them. And then, you know, the show was what's the best one, right? So I'll say what my, oh, yeah. my personal best one was in it. I always go back to the Virgin Oak, to be honest. I think it's yeah. um, a great intro for those that are new to Scotch whiskey. Those who are coming back and wanting to try something new and have fun with, I think the Virgin Oak, it, it's, I call it my summer whiskey. I don't drink a lot of it in the wintertime, but spring leading into summer, it, it's great to enjoy. And it's, yeah, it's a fun whiskey to always uh, go back to. Well, not only that, but like, if that can be a reasonable price, mm -hmm for a long period of time you know mm -hmm. that's that's amazing you don't have that in, in british columbia mm -hmm. yeah. so trini, trini okay. what what's the best deanston i mean i agree with mike there because i've come back to the virgin oak many times i know what he's going to <laughs> but I guess, you know what you you cannot change my mind no yeah, no and that's fair the deanston mm -hmm. 12 is you know what incredible. like the yeah. The 18 was great, but you know what? Like, like the, I mean, the 12 has that soapy kind of like floral thing, which is really it has nice. it all. It has everything. Yeah, the 12 is beautiful. I, I won't I mean, be. The 12 is beautiful. That's. I might I have to have a sample of. I might have to have a sample of Mike's whiskey of the year to to truly determine that. But you know, we'll take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> Next I have, I have a for you right here. They just haven't shipped out yet. Yeah. There Next. you go. Next whiskey fest, we'll do it in person. Yes, yes, I have a few. I, I stocked up on this one. That's awesome. <laughs> you don't well, want to try the whiskey we've been trying to make. Yeah. <laughs> it's all fun. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Mike, again for joining us tonight, and thank you for all of our uh, patrons and people who are just tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, lots and lots of fun. We will be doing more live streams coming up in the near future. Mm -hmm. and uh just lots of videos so so thank yeah. you for joining us tonight yeah okay cheers everybody have cheers. a good evening and mike stick around for a minute and we'll uh we'll, we'll chat with you all right thanks everybody